What's up guys, Tuber Tutorials here and uh, I'm finally back with a new video. I know I haven't put out any new content in a long time. Been busy here and there, you know, doing things, but I'm still here and I'm back with another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be doing another photo manipulation. I believe this is number two. We did one already, so this is going to be another one. Um, want to give credit to the person I forgot the person's name but I saw this tutorial a tutorial on YouTube a long time ago and the person was showing a photo design and I liked the tutorial and I took the concept and just added my own stuff to it so credit goes out to that person whose name I don't remember but before we start shout out to all subscribers it's about 20 something of y'all Shout out to you old and new subscribers. Remember, like the videos, comment so I can know that you like the videos. Alright? So let's go ahead and show you the design. Uh, let me open up design. Find it. Oh, here it is. And again, I have the folder with all the files that you need. So send me a personal message with your email address and I will send you the folders with all the files within 24 hours. Promise. So this is the design. So as you can see, it's a collaboration of stuff. You got ink splatters. You got a flame in the background. You got like stars poking out. And you got some ink splatters. And the image is kind of chopped up into like puzzle pieces. Now it looks pretty difficult, but trust me, it is pretty simple. And like I always say, you will learn it just like that. All right. So I'm not going to get it perfect as it is right now because I spend a lot of time doing this and if I spend a lot of time doing it in a tutorial, we're going to be here for hours. So I'm not trying to do that. So enough talking. Before you start, make sure you load up the ink brush in Photoshop so you have it because we're going to use it. Alright, so we're going to close this document. We don't need that. We're going to go to File, New. Set a size of 1280 by 900 pixels and hit OK. Go to your gradient tool. We're going to select the second gradient, which is the radial gradient. I believe that's what it's called. All right. And make sure that you're going from white to gray. Hit OK. And we're going to click from the center and just drag that out to the corner. And you get that kind of radial effect with the grays on the outside and the white in the center unlock that background layer good so now go back to that folder and we're going to double click on the picture the photoshop picture document and that opens up the picture that's already edited all you have to do is go to your move tool and drag that into place all right and we're going to hit Control t free transformation tool Right click and we're going to flip horizontal. Alright, control minus so we can see the whole thing. Hold down your shift key and resize that to your liking. To your liking mean any size that you want it to be. Okay, and that's just about good for me. Let me see. Cut out. Alright, that's just about good for me. We're going to go to view, fit on screen so we can see everything. Now what we need to do is chop, cut up these bodies into pieces. Pretty simple. Go to your rectangular marquee tool. And we're going to make a selection from the top of the elbow that is not the top. We're going to go from the top of the elbow. Go down to the shoulder. Alright. Then we're going to right click inside the marching ants. And we're going to select layer via cut. What this does is cut the selection and put it in a new layer. So if I turn off this layer, boom. It's cut off. So we're going to go back to the original layer. And we're going to make another cut. And we're going to cut from. Uh, right here. And we're going to go all the way down. To about right here. See if that's just about correct. That should be about right. Okay. Right click. Layer via cut. 
you're going to turn it off. Uh, make sure you turn off the layer so you know what parts you've already cut. Go back to the original layer and we're going to make a final cut of right here. Go down to the bottom. Right click. Layer via cut. Alright. So now we're going to turn on back those layers. We're going to go to the top layer. Select your move tool. We're going to hold down the shift key. And we're going to move this layer out to the right. The top part. Out to the right. Alright, select the second layer and we're going to move that one out to the right as well. Not too much. Alright, and we'll go to the last layer and move that out to the right as well. Alright, we're going to move this one and some more. Alright, perfect. So now what we need to do right now is to just make our lines that goes through the each of the various um cutups if you call it that way so make a new layer and just to not get confused i'm gonna call that line one all right go to your pencil tool make sure you have a pencil size of five make sure your foreground color is white and click hold down the shift key and draw a straight line through the first cut if the line is not positioned directly on the cut, just select your move tool, use your arrows on your keyboard, and just move it into a uh, place. Alright. Make a new layer. I'm going to call that line 2. Alright. Click. Hold on your shift key. Make another line. Do the second cut. All right, move that into place. So you're just doing the same thing over and over for each of the the different cuts. Make sure you name your layers so you don't get con confused. All right, make another line. Let's move that into position. Make a new layer. That's line four. All right, line again. Your your line doesn't have to be white. You can make it any color you want. It's up to you. All right, uh, make a new layer, and we just need one more line, and that's the line for the front right here. All right, so they can move to and uh, move them in position perfectly. All right, that's good. Now we need to do is to add some effects to the line. So we're going to cheat here. We're going to just add one effect to one line and just copy that um, blending style and just paste it to all the other um, lines. All right. So we're going to go to drop shadow. We're going to add a sh opacity of 48, I believe. And we're going to leave everything as it is. The color, the color um codes is gonna be on the screen so you'll see it. Um FFCC00, it's like a light gold. Hit OK. Alright, now we need to add a outer glow. And uh, we're going to make that opacity to a hundred. Size all the way up, range all the way up. Then we're gonna to go to stroke. Put a stroke size of one or two. You can put any size you want. One or two. And we're going to select a color of uh, 3, 1, B, 4, 5, B. It's like a green color. And hit OK. All right. So, like I said, we're going to cheat here. We're going to right click. Copy layer style and select all these other layers. Hold down your shift key and click all the other layers. Right click and just paste layer style. Alright, so all we need to change is the stroke color for each uh, layer. Alright. So we're going to go to this line right here. Alright. Right click. Blending options. And... 
remember what color I used for this one. We're going to go to stroke. Everything stays the same except the, the stroke color. I forgot what this color was. Hold on. It's the wrong one. Let's see. All right. There we go. Right one. Um, go to stroke. I don't remember what the color is, but I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to use my eyedropper tool. I'm going to select one of the colors from the rows. All right. That's exactly the color that I wanted. Hit OK. And hit OK. Um, I wish, let me show you the numbers so you guys know what the numbers are, even though it's, it's going to be on the screen. So that's E45877. Hit OK. Hit OK. And now for the, we're going to copy this layer style. And we're going to paste it to line four, which is the one below it. All right. There we go. And now for the last line, blending options. And the color for this, I do remember, is 10193D, like a dark blue, dark navy blue. Hit OK and hit OK. And we are doing pretty well we have our chopped up image with our lines now what we need to do is add the the brushes so we're going to make a new layer above the background layer all right let's just call that ink one all right and then go to your brush tool and go to your brush presets and i i, I already have one of the ink splatters. It's seven splatters in the in the brush preset. So you can choose any one you want. Don't have to choose the same one that uh, I use. But I'm going to try and use the same ones that I use for the final image. I believe it was this one. Now this looks way too big. So she says, how to say that. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm trying to make it the exact same way. I won't get it the exact same way, but who cares? Uh, we're going to put that about right there. I think that's it. Eh, whatever. Let's drop it right there. All right. Oops. I should have. Let me change the color first. Uh, we, we can just leave. We can change the color in the blending options. Um, Let's add another. Make a new layer. Let's call that ink two all right and we're going to make a new brush let me see what the second brush is that i use i believe it was this one i have no form of clue but resize that down a bit i think that's just about uh good and we're going to position this about right here uh, just kind of push this out some more. I think we're doing good. Drop that right there. All right. And we're going to make another layer. Call that ink three. Again, you can drop these brushes anywhere on the design if you want. It doesn't have to be the exact same spot, you know, that I put it. All right, then let's add, let's see, I believe one is supposed to go at the bottom half right there. Just kind of increase the size on this one. This one's kind of small. We're going to kind of put that at the bottom right here. All right, good. And I think I need one more. Let's call that ink for and I believe if I'm not mistaken that it should be this one right here uh, I believe so all right we're going to resize that down and we're going to drop that about right underneath the legs right there all right so we got our um ink splatters in the background so now what we need to do is to colorize the various uh inks 
so to speak. All right, so let's see. We're going to go to right click blending options. All right, so we're going to add a drop shadow. All right. And we're going to set the opacity to uh 56. And we're going to change the color from a black to a pinkish color. Let's try FF00D8. Beautiful. That's what I needed. Hit OK. Then uh, let's add a color overlay to change the color. Let's see the color. Let's use a color of uh, 0, 5. Mm, oh, yeah, zero seven five two four C. All right, so that's like a, a greenish color. I don't know what that is. A like greenish color, and hit OK. Uh, and hit OK again. All right, so let's cheat again. Let's cheat again. Right click, copy layer style. Select the other layers. Right click and paste layer style. We love cheating. That's what we do all day, every day is cheat. All right. So we're going to just change the colors of each of the different inks. So, oops, it's not what I needed. Ink 2, it's supposed to be an ink 2. Right click, blending options, and let me see, see what color I need for this one. So drop shadow stays the same. Actually, we're going to change the color of the drop shadow, actually. Actually, we're going to change the color of the drop shadow. And we're going to put that color to about a yellowish color. Let's try F8, FB07. Uh, uh, that just looks right. FB, F8, FB07. That looks fine. Hit OK. Then we're going to change the color overlay i need this color to be a dark color not black but like a dark navy blue ob16 uh 32 perfect that's just what i needed and hit okay hit okay all right then we will go to the ink number three which should be the that small one at the bottom right there. Blending options. All right. Let's see what color I need for this one. All right. So in blending options, we're going to change the drop shadow again for this one. Drop shadow is different. This drop shadow is going to be like a greenish color. Uh, let's try 20F72. Uh, a. All right. That's that looks fine. Hit OK. And the color overlay is going to be like a burgundy color, which is going to be eight E one six uh two eight. Perfect. Hit OK. Hit OK. All we need to do now is to do the last, the last one. Which I believe is that's ink number four, right? Ink number four. Blending options. And we're going to once again change the drop shadow. This color is going to be. Once again, all these numbers will be on the screen so you can follow along. FFBE0D. All right. And we're going to change the color overlay and the color overlay we need a pink so let me just go ahead and choose a pink color from this make it more easier EB14CF that looks fine hit OK and hit OK perfectly now we got our ink splatters in the background so now um, everything looks all you know jumbled up right there but once as you add the color correction, it's going to come out outstanding. I need to position this ink brush out some more. Select the move tool. I just need to push this brush out some more. 
just gonna push it out just wanna push it out somewhere cause I, I don't want too many excess excessive brushes on this side I don't want too many excessive brushes on, on this side of the screen of the design so it's gonna push this out push it out push it out push it out uh all right, so that's that's just about fine. All right, so now we have our brushes. Now what we need to do is to add um the the little color spots um on the image. If I can show you what I mean, so you won't get confused. It's a little bright little color circles. Uh, pretty simple to do. Let me show you these little bright spots right here. Alright, we're gonna add those, which is pretty easy. All you need is, uh, your, uh, brush, so to say. So we're gonna make a new layer. We're gonna, we're gonna make that new layer above all the other layers. And I'm gonna call that, um, spot, you know, call whatever you want. Go to your brush tool. And you're gonna select a soft brush. Let me go. I have too many brushes here. It's like a soft brush. We're going to put the size to about too big. It's too big. It's too big. Way too big. Way too big. Let's put the size to about a 125. That's okay. And we're going to change in the corner right here. It says color. We're going to change from color to swatches. And we're going to choose some bright colors. If I can find the exact same colors. Alright, we're going to choose some bright colors. And let's choose red. And we're going to put one right here. Alright, and we're going to change the blend mode to screen. And that's just brightened it. Brightens it a lot more. Alright, let's use a yellow. Again, choose bright colors so it can stand out. We're going to put yellow right there. Let's choose green. Uh, actually, let's choose a blue color. I want a blue. Let's drop a blue right here. All right. Let's choose. Uh, let's go like a purple. Again, choose bright colors. Let's drop a purple right there. I want a green. I want to put a green somewhere. Uh, let's put a green right. Oh, let's not put a green right there. Let's put a green right here. Let's put, let's, let's put a green right there. Alright, and then we can drop any colors out here. Let's put one right here to make it bright up. Let's try, let's try, let's try, let's try, let's try. Let's try a pink. I'm just dropping it at different sections just to, you know, brighten up. Actually, I want to put this one right here. Brighten up that face area. And let's just drop one right there. Alright, so you, you can drop these color spots anywhere you want so I'm just gonna leave those right there alright so we got that part done so now what we need to do now is to add um, some color corrections which is pretty simple we're gonna add curves but we're gonna add the curves above all the layers we're gonna add the curves above all the layers including the ink and the the different body section so about right here all right again the lines are not included just gonna add it right at the first layer that we did the cut from if I'm making any sense and we're gonna select um curves right here in your adjustments just select curves all right and we're gonna just we're gonna um put the dark section down all right. Let me see if that's right. Actually, we're gonna put this section up. I want the darks to show out. Put that up, and we're gonna put the bottom section down. Make like a small S. I see how that just darkens everything. All right, that's just good. Now this is the part that looks pretty cool. We're gonna to go to the RGB, and we're gonna to go to blue. Alright, this is something that I just picked up a while back. Now we're gonna 
move the cursor to the corner until you see those four directional arrows. And we're going to move this bottom section up. As you can see, it makes the whole image kind of blue. And then we're going to go to the top corner and we're going to move this section down. And it's going to give you that vintage kind of yellow effect. It looks pretty cool. I like it. It's pretty nice. And you can use it for any picture. Any picture. It's a cool effect that I just learned. Pretty nice. And that's just about good. Alright, so that's fine. Now we need to add... See, we need to add another curve. But for this curve, we're going to add it above all the other layers. So this one is just going to change the effect of everything. So add it all. So go to the top layer, which is the spot layer. And we're going to select curves. All right. And we're going to do the Lomo effect that I love to do, which is this part down, this part up. Make a small S. We're going to go to our green, this part down, this part up. So as you can see, everything is just standing out so pretty. And then go to your blue, put this part up, and this part down. And there we go. All right. So now, so far, so good. We have our color correction Done. You can add more color corrections if you want. You can add brightness and contrast. You can add exposure. You can do any anything that you want to do. So now what we need to do now is to add some photo manipulation. This is a photo manipulation design. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to drag this image right here from our folder. The Space Nebula. I love using this image. I use it many times in different tutorials. If you watch all my videos, you'll see that I use this image about more than one times. Alright, go to your move tool. We're going to move this image above. Uh, we're going to put it above the background layer. So select the background layer. Go back to that image. And we're going to move that image right there. It's way too big, so we're going to go to Control T and Control minus. Hold down your shift key. And we're just going to position that so it kind of fits the screen. Position that. I want the entire screen to be covered. Alright, let's control plus. Let's zoom in. Now, this area of the picture, this colorful area right here, I want that to stand out. So let's just drag that out. Hold on your shift key and just drag this part in. Drag that out. I want that color part to show. And drag this out. Perfect. Check that off. Let's go to view. Fit on screen. Actually, this part is not. Drag this part some more. Alright, perfect. So now we need to change that blend mode to overlay. And there we go. Got our nice stars. You see the stars popping out and all of that. Now finally, all we need to do right now is to add flames. Little flames in the background. So we're going to go back to our folder. And we're going to drag this flame image into Photoshop. Alright. Let me close this layer. Don't want to save. Alright, select your move tool and just move this image above the space nebula image. Alright, so go ahead, control minus, zoom out, control T, free transformation tool. Again, hold down your shift key and we're going to resize that down. We're going to resize that down. Alright, let's control plus, let's zoom in a bit. And we're going to put your cursor to the corner. The arrow is going to change to like a bendy arrow thing. And we're going to turn it around. We're going to rotate it, rotate it to make it look like it's blazing off the back of the design. Just like that. That's about perfect. Check that off. Go to view, fit on screen. 
and we're going to change that blend mode to screen so we can get rid of all of the black screen and boom there's your flames we can actually drag it out some more if you want to all right so at this part is up to you we can add some brightness and contrast we're going to increase the contrast i want the contrast to be high brightness all right and then image adjustments levels i want the dark to stand out there we go increase the dark some more so it makes the the flame more visible all right and then you can touch that up some more by adding go to your burn tool and just darken the darker areas some more if you want to and finally we're going to go to filter sharpen and hit sharpen and that's just about it that's basically the design so um it's pretty simple even though it was long but it's just a lot of stuff to add in and colors and stuff this is why it's so long but at the end of the day it's a pretty simple design so go ahead try it out you know make it your own as i always say add different brushes add any amount of brushes change the color you can add different things to it and make it look your own so once again thank you guys for watching remember to like the video and comment and if you haven't subscribed please do so that would be very much appreciated and uh hope this hope this tutorial um help you and that's it peace out more videos coming soon two tutorials peace